I've always wondered, when you pilot hole wood, does it make the joint weaker or stronger? Let's find out. Hiya folks, welcome back to Test Tuesday. If you remember last time, we were having a look at the screw pull-out strength in pine. We've got some really interesting results. Link to that video down below. Today, as promised from last time, I want to find out what difference it makes using a pilot hole. And I've always wondered, does it make the screw holding stronger or weaker? Because on one hand, there's less material to screw into because you've removed some with the pilot hole. But on the other hand, the thread is getting probably a better grip in the hole because it's not having to squash the wood out the road since you've already removed some of the wood with the pilot hole. Now this is one of these tests where there's so many different variables in terms of how deep do you make the pilot hole, what material you're going into, the width of the pilot hole. So take this with a pinch of salt. I'm going for a two millimeter pilot hole using all the same screw sizes as the last tests that I've done, which was a four by 16 millimeter, a 4x30 and a 5x40. So exactly the same tests as last time, but this time every single one of them with a full length 2mm pilot hole. I'm even running the tests into the same piece of wood as last time just so that we can rule out a different piece of wood maybe being stronger than the piece of wood from last time. I've made all the pilot holes far enough away from the holes that were made last time that it's not going to influence the results but at the same time they're close enough that we can say essentially it's the same piece of wood. So I'm going to run through all of the tests dead quickly. I'm not going to talk you through the actual tests but what I will do is I'll go through all of the results at the end. As per usual I'm running every test three times so that I can take an average Running the data logger that I made on everything, we'll have a look at the graphs later on. Doty, right, here's the results. There you go. Bye. I'm only joking. Right, so here's all the results shoved from the data logger into Excel, and I've graphed them all up. So this is across all of the results for the pilot hole tests and for the no pilot hole tests as well. Can I just interject for a second? Am I the only one who thinks that looks a bit like a cock and balls? Or have I been looking at it too long? Just to try and simplify this slightly, everything that's greeny colour is the 5x40 screws. Everything that's this kind of browny colour is the 4x30s. And the little 4x16s are the blue on here. And the dotted lines are no pilot hole and the solid lines are pilot hole. 
So what I've done, as per usual, is to make this graph way, way simpler, is I've run an average on every set of results. So obviously we did every test three times, so I've put together a rolling average of those three sets of results for every set of tests, if that makes sense. And the running set of averages takes us to this, so hopefully that's a little bit easier to digest and, and understand. I've also added a little person on here to show kind of average body weight. I weigh about 80 kilos, so there's the 80 kilo mark, that's one of me. There's the 160 kilo mark, so that's another one of me. So for every one of these red lines, you're going past my body weight, basically. So as before, green lines are the 5x40, orange lines are the 4x30, and the blue lines are the 4x16. One of the interesting things to note here, and I don't know if there's any significance to it whatsoever, it could just be that I turned the winder handle a little bit slower, it's, it's very hard to judge with this, but you can see on the 4x16 especially, the screw, when it has failed on the no pilot hole version, has failed more gradually than the version with a pilot hole. I mean, other than that, I mean, look at the results here. It's almost identical. The initial loading and then the peak load is, there's nothing in it. It's just the failure rate seems to have been a bit more gradual when there was no pilot hole which does kind of make sense. There's less material to be pulled out the road on the pilot hole, so the screw's probably going to fail a little bit quicker. But as I say, there would have to be hundreds of other tests done to actually prove whether that's a thing or not. It's, it's such a tiny, insignificant difference. I wouldn't read anything into it, but it, it's an interesting one. You can kind of say the same thing on the 5x40 as well, where there seems to be a more gradual failure on the dotted line that's a no pilot hole versus a slightly steeper failure of the pilot hole version however with the 4x30 which is the brown line there's very little difference now that could be because the 4x30 is a self-drilling screw so it does kind of make a pilot hole as it's going into the wood if you look at the kind of orangey brown dotted line versus the uh, solid line very little in it either way well beyond my body weight on a single screw and well beyond two of me on a single screw with the 5 by 40 so i really wouldn't worry about it too much so then and i know you're dying to know which did best the pilot hole version or the no pilot hole version overall and i've covered up the average results and i'll tell you about that in a minute but this is Every screw, so 4x16, 4x30, 5x40, and every peak result. So this is just the peak loadings that we're looking at here. No pilot and the 2 mil pilot per test. And the results ended up being quite interesting. First of all, for the 4x16, the average did come out very slightly lower on the pilot hole test so 66.7 kilos versus 64 kilos and that's an average of all the peak load results very little in it though so certainly nothing to write home about and then if we look at the 4x30 turbo gold very slightly higher results for no pilot hole 165.7 kilos versus 159.7 for the two mil pilot so a very slight drop in strength when the pilot hole has been used again there's so little in it it's not worth worrying about but it's a silver screw where things got a little bit more interesting because check this out for whatever reason the pilot hole version did better than the no pilot hole version and it was really because of this one test that we did that got 211 kilos on a single screw and it happened to be in the 2 mil pilot. At the end of the day, it's the same piece of wood, even drilled in more or less the same area of the same piece of wood. So 
again, the results are so close, it's negligible. But the pilot hole version won on the 5x40. But the no pilot hole version won on the 4x30 and the 4x16. If I show you that on this little graph here, it makes a little bit more sense. Again, we've got the little person here to show you my body weight. 80 kilos there, 160 kilos there. So this top red line is the equivalent of two of me hanging from a single screw. And you can see 4 by 16, not a lot in it. 67 and 64, almost neck and neck. The 4 by 30, the turbo gold, 166 and 160. Again, almost neck and neck. The non-pilot hold version just pipped the pilot hold version to the post, but both are beyond double my body weight on a single screw. And then, as I was just explaining before, with the 5x40 screw, for whatever reason, the pilot hole version just pipped the non-pilot hole version to the post. 200 kilos versus 198. Again, well beyond double my body weight on a single screw. I think the general conclusion here is in this set of circumstances, with these sorts of screws, with a 2mm pilot hole into softwood, it makes nigh on no difference whether or not you've got a pilot hole or no pilot hole. So if you need to use a pilot hole, for example, to stop the wood from splitting, or because you're screwing the screw in by hand and it's easier to screw it in once you've got a pilot hole there, or a pilot hole is just used for alignment or whatever, I think the general conclusion is it makes no difference to the strength of the joint. And in the case of the 5x40, it actually made the joint stronger. I know I will get people asking to do this test on oak. There is no point in doing this test on oak because the results will be so high with and without a pilot hole if you remember back to the last set of tests we did where we we're comparing oak and pine strength, oak was off the scale. It, it's beyond my measuring equipment. You know, by the time you're getting past quarter of a metric ton on a single screw, I would say that you're getting into the realms of statistical inaccuracies will be very difficult to prove between results that are so high and it's pointless anyway. If you want to do a pilot, do a pilot. If you don't want to do a pilot, don't do a pilot. It ain't going to make a jot of difference to the strength of the joint when you're going past 300 kilos on a single screw. I hope you found that useful. Pop in the comments if you've got any questions or if there's anything that you would like me to retest or if you want clarification on any of the results, then do pop it into the comments below. If there's anything that you would like to see me test, pop that in the comments below as well. Quite a few people have asked me to test different types of screw. So in other words, the same thread thickness and the same length, but just a different brand. I will tell you right now that the results will be almost identical. Unless you're using a brand that's so bad that the screws break, but I don't use brands of screws where the screws break. So whether you're using the screw fix range of screws, or Spax, or Riser, or whoever, if the screw looks the same, I can tell you right now the results will be pretty much identical. But if you want us to prove that on a test, I will. Tell me what size screw you want me to test and into what material. Tell me the test parameters and I will consider running it. But I do think it's a bit of a pointless test. Remember, there's links in the description to the previous tests that I've run that have been similar to these. Lots more tests coming up as well. So don't forget to hit subscribe. I shall see you next time. Bye bye. bye.